Hey everybody, this is Rick from PseudoSamurai.com and I'm back with another exciting Citrus tutorial. Um, today we're going to try and see if we can't get a game running on a mobile device. So um, the Starling framework is what Citrus Engine is built on, was, was sort of designed for mobile development. Um, so it makes it really possible to make a, a smooth running application uh, using ActionScript you know flash you can get a flash application working almost like a native um, a native app on a mobile phone okay so um, let's see if we can't make that work All right so we're gonna jump into flash builder here and I want to make a new uh, action script mobile project just like that okay and um, we're just gonna call it citrus mobile Okay, and we'll hit next. Okay, and next you get to set your, your target platforms. You can do iOS or Google or Android. Uh, you could target both, it's fine. But since I don't actually have a, a testing device for Apple, I'm just gonna stick with Google for now. Uh, there's some differences there, so you know that might be worth covering later on. Uh, in, in the Android, we have to set the permissions here, okay? And um, this this little application we're gonna make today doesn't require anything, so it doesn't matter what's selected here. Okay, uh, real quick, I'll, I'll show you what's under the Apple. Um, there are no permissions, but under platform settings, you can select uh, iPhone, iPad, or iPod, or you do an iPad. So um, you wanna kinda know the the size of the screen you're targeting and, and things like that. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into developing for multiple screen sizes yet. Um, right now we're just we're getting a simple program going on Google Android. So I'm going to um, uncheck the reorient. I don't want it flipping around. Um, you know, if you're making a, a release build, you want to deal with reorienting the screen and things like that. And I'm also going to make it full screen right here. Okay. Uh, there's nothing to set under the platform, and it's funny, Apple is sort of the opposite of Google. Uh, nothing under platform, but you have permissions, and then Apple, no permissions, but you have platform. So anyway, I, uh, I'm just talking now. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to add a SWIC, and this is where we add our um, Citrus Engine. So I'm going to add that, and I'm going to hit Finish, and voila, we've got our... Uh, mobile project ready to go. Okay, so first thing we want to do is to actually take a look over here you'll see that there's a, an app XML okay uh, that's not normally there. This appears for uh, air applications things like that. Anyway we want to go in here and make a few changes um, to get our, our, uh, our program working right. So I'm looking for this initial window tag right here to here. Basically there's there's information in here that we might need to change around okay so first thing is we'll go to line 100 here okay and we want to uncomment that and we want to make the full screen uh, true okay uh, actually I missed something aspect ratio right here at line 92 we're going to change that one, and if you look above it, it can tell you the options, landscape, portrait, any. Uh, I actually want this to be landscape, like that, okay. Um, and then 104, line 104, that's our render mode. We want to make sure we set that to direct, like that, okay. So that should deal with everything. Um, this stuff is already set down here. That's done for you by the Flash uh, Flash Builder when it sets it up. I guess I didn't have to do full screen because it's right here. But um, you know, better safe than sorry. Making sure you get all this stuff in here. So I'm just going to save that and close it. And now we're ready to to start in here. Okay, um, we're going to set this up pretty much like we've always done. But there's going to be one minor change. Okay. Um, so let's look at the level I built for this. Okay, so uh, let me open that up real quick. 
All right, so this is a very simple level. It's just a flat plane. That's it. Uh, it's it's 3,500 by 640. And the reason I made it 640 is that's kind of the, the wider end of um, a phone's revolution. Of course, it's going to be landscape, so, you know, it'll, it'll be... Uh, let's, let's see if I can draw something for you guys. Uh, nope, I'm having serious problems. Okay, here we go. So we're going to play it. So here's our phone, right? And it's landscape. Okay. Uh, you want to know how wide or tall your uh, your phone is and then how long it is. Now the the size is very greatly based on the phone type. So you um, if you're making like a professional game or something, you'd need to deal with multiple sizes, multiple resolutions, you know, lower res graphics for for older phones and higher res graphics for newer stuff. I have to deal with um, an iPad resolution versus So there's there's actually a lot to to this, but I just want you to be aware of sort of the the resolution and how we're dealing with this. Anyway, um, when I was looking around, 640 seemed like a good kind of average size for the height. So that's why I went with 640, and then I just made it as wide as I want. The reality is I can make this level as big as I want, and you know the screen, no matter how big it is, will show just part of the level as long as the level's bigger than the you know the maximum size screen. Okay, but anyway, all I have is my guy, some land and some clouds, a couple um, bushes and stuff, so that as he's walking along, you can tell he's moving. Okay, so that's that's the simple basic level, and we just uh, you know export that Swift. Okay, and that's that's all I really need to do with that. Okay, so um, first thing is we want to make sure there's a stage. Right, so we're gonna see if there's a stage. Right, we're gonna just call init. Right, but if there's no stage, we want to add an event listener, and then we're looking for event dot. Whoops, let's import that, and then add it to stage, and then we're just gonna call on stage. Okay, so next thing, let's make a init. So private function init, and uh, it's not going to return anything. Okay, and so well, we'll come back to this. Let's make all our. We'll just stub out our methods real quick. So we're also going to need a private function uh, for when we load our our. Um, our uh, Swift, our level. So we're just going to call that on load, and it's going to take a event. Right? It's not going to return anything. Okay, and then let's see. We need the on stage. So we'll private function on stage, and again, that's a an event. Void. So this shouldn't seem too strange or unfamiliar. Okay, so um, so in our init function, right, we're going to set up our starling. Right, so uh, set up. Let's set up starling I think that's right. Oh, before I can set up Starling, um, I need to make this extend uh, Starling Citrus Engine. So, Starling Citrus Engine. There we go. Get rid of that. Okay, so set up Starling, and we're gonna leave it. Uh, this first one is, you know, normally you just say true, 
uh, but we're going to add in some more stuff for funsies. Um, so true is the debug mode, okay, and basically that just tells you the, the frame rate and the draw calls and that stuff, and it's up in the left hand corner, and you should be pretty used to it by now. So uh, I like to have that information, so I'm going to leave it in for now. Um, Anti-aliasing, one is fine, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a new rectangle, and so this is for the viewport, okay. So we're going to go with uh, a rectangle. And we're just going to start at uh, zero, 00, right? And then we want to go the full width of our stage. So stage dot full screen um, width, right? And then stage dot full, oops, no space there, full screen uh, height. Okay, so that's going to give a, a, a rectangle that, that represents our viewport. Okay, and that's all we really need, so we'll close that up. Okay, so we set up Starling. Next is we need to make a loader. Loader is a new loader, right? And we want to just import loader. Oops. And if I've been using a different editor for uh, Android and my, my hotkeys are all messed up. But uh, we're going to make a local or an instance variable, I'm sorry, of loader right there. And loader dot content dot, whoops, content loader info, I'm sorry, dot add event listener. Okay, so we're going to listen for when uh, we're complete. So event complete. And then we're going to call on load. Yeah, just like that. Okay, and then loader dot load. And then we need our new URL request, right? And then we're just going to load in level dot swift. Okay, so this part's a little different. Normally, what I've been doing is, oops, I missed the bracket, or parentheses there. Uh, normally what I do is I make a new folder in here called levels and I put my level in and stuff like that. The problem with that is when this gets kind of installed on the phone, the file, the directory structure is different than what you see here. So, uh, you know, if I did the dot dot up a level and then go to the folder levels, and look for it like that, it's not going to find it. It's not there. Okay, so the, the directory structure is different. So, you know, you could play around with um, putting things in certain directories and, and, and stuff like that, but for right now, this is just going to be easier if I just put everything in my default package. That way, I don't have to worry about um, folders or, or, or parent levels or anything like that. It's just right here. So, if I go to um, my flash file, I I exported this level. Looks like this. It's huge. There we go. Um, I'm just going to copy that. Whoops. Uh, into my default package. So I'll just drag it over here, and boom, I've got it in my default package. In fact, I'm going to do that with my sprites as well. So um, with this level, right, like before. I guess I can get rid of this stuff. Um, I have my images right here. What I would do is, you know, generate a sprite sheet with just the, the stuff I need. It's a small sprite sheet, um, which I've already done. And I, I've covered it in some other videos. So if, you, if you're lost right now, uh, go back a couple videos and you'll figure out what's going on here. Okay, but so I have my sprite sheet, my XML, and my hero. I'm going to put all those in the default package as well. Okay, so I have all the files I need to make this happen in my default package. All right, awesome. So uh, once this is loaded, right, I'm just going to set the state to a new level, right, and we're going to send in the e dot target dot loader dot 
content, like so. And then we just do a little cleanup here. We'll say uh, loader. In fact, we'll just copy this line real quick and remove this event listener. Remove that event listener, and then uh, loader dot unload and stop. Okay, now uh, my on stage basically is um, I'm going to clean up the listener. So I'm just going to instead of adding it, we're going to remove it like that. It's always good to clean up your listeners. Um, you know, in your listener, you can set a weak reference um, in here. So there are other variables. Let's see if I can get it to come up. Uh, Dang it, where's my code hinting? There it is. So use capture, so you'd leave that as false, right? And then um, priority, you can leave that at zero. And then there's a use weak reference, which is automatically set to false. But um, if you set it to true, it just basically after that event fires, it's, it's signal for um, cleanup. Now that's good in certain events, like this one, I only wanna use that event once, but sometimes events wanna um, you want to listen all the time. So that's why it's always set to false, so it's not garbage collected after the event fires. But <clears throat> it's still, even if you use weak references, even if I went in here and set true and all that, um, I'd still want to remove it just to uh, be sure, right? You just want to make sure you're, you're cleaning up after yourself. You don't want any um, performance leaks there. Whoops. So um, anyway, we get rid of that event listener, okay? And then here's the little bit that's different. We're gonna say stage dot align is equal to stage align um, dot top left, right? And then we're gonna say stage dot scale mode is equal to uh, stage scale mode dot uh, no scale right so we just want to make sure so um, if you don't include this uh, for whatever reason when flash starts up on an Android device it starts up at half the screen I don't know why it's like instead of starting at zero zero it starts at like negative half negative half kind of so uh, it's kind of a problem so you just throw this in there make sure everything's lined up and you're not scaling anything weird and then we're gonna init right here and voila that's that's all we need uh, in this the, in our startup class here our citrus mobile class it's giving me an error because I don't have a level yet so let's uh, let's let's make a level maybe that's not gonna let me do it Okay, so we'll just go in here and say new action script class. And we're just going to call it level, right? And we want to extend uh, state from citrus. Or no, I'm sorry, starling state. There it is, the starling state. There we go. And here we are. Okay, so um, this level is really pretty easy. Okay, a couple things. First thing is uh, we want um, our level. And that's a type movie clip. Oh, I forgot the word var. Switching languages around, it messes you up a little. And we just want that. Okay. And then the other uh, field variable is just um, our hero, which doesn't need to be, but uh, I'm going to make him that anyway. And he's not going to be of type hero. Okay. We need to change around the hero class a little bit. So we're going to extend it and we're going to make a class called mobile hero, like that. 
Okay, so uh, I can create that class right now, and he's going to extend hero, and we want the box 2D uh, version of hero, not the simple and not the nape one. So, whoops. Right there. And we'll finish that. So this will extend the hero class. Okay. And I don't need you yet. Okay, so I've got those. First thing in here, we call our super. And then we're just going to set our level equal to level. And we need to jump in here and accept this uh, level. It's a movie clip. Okay. So we got our level, and then um, we set up our used objects array. Right? So. And this is just a good uh, habit to make to remember to include everything you might need in your game. Okay, so uh, we do this, and we just set up our array. But really, all we need is our mobile hero, which I already included. But I'm going to do it anyway. And uh, platform, just like that. Okay, that's it. That's all I need. All right, and what I'm going to do is override um, the initialize function. Okay, and we're going to call our super. Okay, first thing we need is our box 2D, so our B2D, and it's going to be of type box 2D. Okay. And it's just a new box 2D. And you got to give it a name. You can call it whatever. Okay. Um, and then we can just add B 2D. Okay. Next up, we need our uh, texture atlas. So bar, and we'll just call it level level text. All right. And it's type texture atlas, right? And it's a new texture atlas. And we're going to make a texture. Darling textures there. From bitmap. And then um, once again, we're going to. Uh, include our um, files in a separate class, right? So real quick, I'll make a a new class, action script class. I'm just gonna call it capital R, and finish, okay? And you don't need a constructor, no constructor. We're just gonna embed, and then we're gonna embed our level. Oops, God, I'm a mess right now. Level.png, right? And then call that public static const. And we'll just call it level. Whoops, don't capitalize everything. Level art. And it'll be type class. Cool. Okay, and then I'm also going to embed. Um, level.xml right and that needs a mime type so mime type and then octet stream is what we want and this is again a public static constant and I'll call this one level xml and again it's a class okay so um, this embeds these files. So if we look at our uh, package explorer over here, um, I've got the level XML and the level PNG. This is going to embed them for us. Um, it's a good way to embed your um, assets. Okay, so back to our level here. Uh, texture from bitmap. And then <clears throat> what we need is a new R dot level art right because it's a class we need to make a new one 
and then we want a new XML and then again new r dot level XML boom uh, boom I think that closes it yep there we go okay so next uh, object maker starling dot from a movie clip and we pass in our movie clip and then our texture atlas level text there we go okay so that'll make our level next we just set up our hero hero is equal to a new mobile hero and he needs a name so we'll just give him a name hero and then we send in a uh, an object of all the parameters we might want so we want a starting location X and if I look over here real quick unlock all this stuff this guy right here his name is hero start okay uh, he'll never show up in the in the map or anything like that it's just a, a movie clip that I gave a name to but I use it as a starting position right so all I have to do to reference that is get a reference of my level and then the name hero start and then the X position that's it so Y and then level dot hero start dot Y okay um, <clears throat> if, if I come back in here we can see that his width is 66 as height is 92 um, so we can use that as the width and height over here so width um, and it doesn't have to be exact I'm gonna shrink it a little bit so uh, we'll make him 65 and height will be uh, we'll call it 85 and then finally we set the view right and then we just want to hero dot swf so that's our our swift file over here okay so we got that close down that shut that boom we've got a new hero now we just add him to our scene here hero okay one thing we have to do is uh, starling art dot loop animation or set loop animations here and this is just for his idle animation um, so it it'll loop this animation when he's standing there perfectly still Boom. and then finally we'll set up our camera okay so um, start with var camera this is a starling um, camera and we say view dot camera as a starling camera okay and then we'll just set a few things so spell correctly camera dot set up so this this tells it what to point at so our, our target is our hero and then we're gonna make a new point and the point is stage dot stage width divided by two right so we want the center and stage dot stage height again divided by two and I use the bitwise operator there okay so I made a point next we make a new rectangle rectangle there and we just want zero zero and then the level the size of the level so we'll say level dot width and level dot g i g h t okay height okay so now we've got a rectangle kind of our bounds you might think of it like that and then we want a new point 
And this is sort of the easing property of our camera here, how it follows. So um, I haven't noticed a huge difference in any numbers I put in here, so I just kind of throw in whatever. But 0 0.5, 0 0.5 seems to work for me. Close that off. And then finally, we'll set the parallax mode. Camera dot parallax mode. And we're going to go with a citrus camera dot parallax mode top left. Okay. So that's our level. It's a really a pretty simple level. Um, so nothing too big there. Okay. Uh, now let's go to our hero and before we do that we need to make another class okay and this is our input class so right click here go new action script class and we're going to call it mobile uh, input and it is going to extend the input class okay citrus dot input dot input so finish that okay so let's start with our input all right. Um, we're gonna have to override a few things, so let's let's just block out all of our uh, our methods real quick. Okay. So uh, first thing is I want to override um, initialize. Right. So. In here, we're going to call the super first, and then what we want is uh, we don't need this yet, I guess. So this dot enabled is equal to true. Okay, so we're going to enable this, and then we're going to override the enable function in a second. But um, so we're basically enabling or enabling the input method. Okay. Next up, um, we want to override the enabled. So set enabled, right? So this is a setter, and um, so all we got to do is super dot enabled equals value, right? But then also what we're going to do is, uh, if we're enabled, we're going to add an event listener. Oh, there's something I forgot. Up here in my uh, constructor, I want to get a reference to Citrus Engine. Okay, so we're going to say uh, CE is equal to, and we'll call it uh, Citrus Engine dot get instance as Starling Citrus Engine like that and then we're going to say dot Starling dot stage so basically we're getting a, a reference to the stage of our Citrus Engine if that makes sense okay and then I want to make a an instance variable up here Okay, good. So back down to here. If it's enabled, we're going to say ce .add event listener, um, and we're listening for a touch event. And we'll do Starling events there. Touch event dot touch, and we'll call on touch. I guess I'm really blocking all the the, the methods I wanted, but I got swept up in this function here, I guess. Uh, so if it's disabled, right, if it's not enabled, it's disabled, we're going to just remove that event listener. Okay, so copy you, paste you, change you to remove. Okay, so that's all we need in the uh, The enabled function. Next up, uh, we want to make a 
private function on touch. Okay, and we're getting a touch event. Whoops. Touch event, and we're not going to return anything. Okay, so in here, let's set um, touch start. And this is a type touch. Okay, and that's just going to be e dot get touch. Now, right now, um, I'm, I'm only handling single touch. This isn't multi touch enabled yet. I might get to that next time, but um, you know, I'm making a very, very simple interface here. Uh, it would not work for, well, anything really except for this example, but it should get you started on the road to figuring out how to how to control your character here. So anyway, uh, what we need is a touch phase. So touch phase right here, dot began. So we're listening for when the touch begins, and then we want to listen for when it ends. Um, so again, CE, and then touch phase dot ended. Okay, so we know when they put their finger on and when they take their finger off. Okay, next I want to get the center line of um, my level or of my screen essentially. So we'll say uh, we'll get a number, and it's just a ce dot stage width, right? Divided by one. So we just want to know the middle of our stage, the width of it, anyway. Okay, and so what we're going to say is um, if it's being touched, to touch start, okay, so if the screen is being touched, we want to know um, is it on the left hand side of the center line or the right hand side of the center line, right? So I'll just say, I'm going to set a, a make a variable called uh, Green touch, and it will be getting crazy here. Uh, touch start dot global x. So we want to know the x value. If it's greater than center, right? It'll be one. If it's less than center, it will be negative one. Okay. Easy enough. Oh, and I should probably make that instance variable right there. Okay. Boom, boom. Let's make a little room here. Okay, so um, then if if uh, the touch ends, right? So touch end. We want to know that too, right? So screen touch. Is equal to zero. Okay, so if they're not touching it, it's at zero. If they if they touch on the right hand side, it'll be one, and if they touch on the left hand side, it'll be negative one. And that's kind of our directions. We're either going forward or backwards or standing still, if that makes any sense. Okay. So next up is we just want to set up a getter. So public function get. Um, Green touch touched, I guess. So we want to know if the screen is touched, and this will return a number. Uh, I guess it could be an int. It doesn't really matter. Um, and we're just going to return uh, screen touch. Okay, so it's either going to return a one, a negative one, or a zero. Okay. Um, and then finally, the last thing we need to do is just override the destroy. So, public function get 
function. Oh, that was loud, sorry. Um, I feel like I messed something up here. There it is. Okay, and then we just want to say this dot enabled equals false, and then super dot destroy. Again, this is all about garbage collection here. So um, disabling this will remove the event listener. You know, enabling it will add the event listener. Okay, so if this is enabled, we'll be listening, and uh, the on touch function will work. Right? If it's not, it won't. So. That's our mobile input class. Okay, let's uh, I'll close down R. We won't need that. We don't need a level anymore. Okay, so now we're in our hero. Okay, so where to start? Okay, first thing is let's let's set some uh, constants. This is just helpful. It's probably in the right spot to put them. I should have put them in the mobile input class, but. We're just going to go with this for now. So, a constant, and we're just going to call it right equal to one. And just let me just copy. So we want left and stop. Okay, so one, negative one. And zero. There we go. That way you just keep it straight in your head and you don't have to remember the number. Not that it's that difficult, but you get the idea. Okay, so uh, first thing in our constructor here, we're going to say mobile input is a new mobile input. Okay, and we will create an instance variable there. And I'll just space out those. And then all I'm going to do is initialize my mobile input. So mobile, mobile input dot initialize. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to override uh, the update function right and this is sort of a there's a lot to that so the other thing we're going to override is the destroy uh, okay good so in here all we all we need to do is say mobile input dot destroy and then super dot destroy okay all right so let's deal with the movement of our character here um, so first thing we want is to just call the super right super dot up date no Let's try that again. Super dot update and then the time delta. Okay. All right. So uh, first thing we need is um, a reference to our uh, the current the body velocity, right? So we're gonna we're gonna create a var called velocity. Okay, and this is a b two vec2 okay and um, this is a, a property on the hero class so we're calling body dot and we want the get linear velocity okay so we're gonna need to know the velocity and then we're gonna set up a little flag here bar and we'll just call it moving moving there we go moving and it's a boolean a boolean and we're just going to call it false 
All right. Now what I'm going to do is um, switch my mobile input here. So mobile input dot screen touched. All right. So I'm essentially every frame I'm going to listen or I'm going to check if the screen is being touched. And if it is, I'm going to get the I'm going to decide what to do. All right. So. Um, in case of the right, eight, ugh, um, we'll just set up our cases real quick. Case left, break, and then uh, case stop. Nimble fingers that suck. Uh, and then the default. I always set up a default, right? I'm just going to break it. OK, so uh, in, in the case of the, the right side of the screen being pushed, what we're going to do is say velocity dot add. And then we want get slope based move angle very descriptive name okay so um, we're just going to add to the velocity going that direction okay and then we want to set our flag so we'll say moving is equal to true okay left is very similar in fact we can copy this except we're not adding we're subtracting. Okay, just like that. And then in the event of stopping, all we want to do is change our flag moving is equal to false. Like that. Okay, all right. So underneath here, we'll say if uh, we're moving and the uh, player moving hero, okay, and not player moving hero. So basically, what this is saying is, um, if the hero isn't already moving, but it should be moving. So this is kind of the first tick after we pressed um, a direction, right? What we want to do is say uh, player moving hero. We're going to set that to true. And this is a player moving hero is a, a variable on the class. It's an instance variable of hero. So we set that to true. And then what we want to do is basically turn off the friction to allow our, our, our uh, object to move. So set friction and we're going to set it to zero. So we're kind of jumping into box 2D here a little bit, but so we're turning down the friction which allows the the character it has some some um, velocity here and no friction, so it's going to move in the direction we want it to go. Okay? Then we say else if not moving and moving hero. So this is sort of the opposite. If uh, the first tick, so the hero is moving, but we just stopped, right? So this is the first tick after we, we kind of lifted up our finger. The hero is still moving. What we need to do is put the, um, whoops, put the, uh, the friction back in, basically. So to copy this stuff here and actually I like to break them up a little bit so I can read them easier uh, so player moving hero this is going to be false now and then the friction is we have a value set um, on the hero class right there friction 
Okay, we're almost done, I promise. So next I say if uh, velocity dot x is um, greater than max velocity. So our hero actually has some acceleration. That means it, it doesn't go from zero to full speed. What it does is it accelerates continuously. And this, this little clause that we're going to write basically prevents it from exceeding a max velocity, kind of limits how fast he can move. So he accelerates up to the top speed and then stays at that top speed, if that makes any sense. So max velocity, right? So if, if, um, if he's moving greater than the velocity or the max velocity, we're just going to set the um, set it to max velocity. So if he exceeds it, it just limits it back down to the max, right? Like that. Hopefully, uh, this makes sense. Else, if and then so the thing is, since he can go two directions, we got to cover both sides. So velocity dot x is less than, and then we want the negative max velocity, right? And then we set the velocity. to negative velocity. Okay, so that's kind of low down here. Get some space going. So hopefully this makes sense. And then the last thing we want to do is just call our update animation. Okay. Since um, we're not doing anything special we don't really need to play with the animation. We're not adding any new animations or anything like that. Okay, so I don't need to override the animation function or anything. Okay, so real quick, just to kind of summarize the, the the nuts and bolts of this is, we're gonna listen for when someone starts touching. Uh, when they do, we're gonna see if it's on the left or right hand side of the screen. Right, so if it's on the left side we go backwards it's negative one if it's on the right side we go forward it's positive one okay and then we just we broadcast that out to anyone who's listening or or might check in on it and then on the hero we check every frame we say hey uh is someone touching the screen if they are, are they going left are they going right do they want us to stop okay uh then if if we aren't moving but we should be moving we need to get rid of the friction so that we can accelerate. Okay, if we are moving but we shouldn't be moving, we need to set the friction so that we slow down. Okay, if we're going too fast, we need to limit our speed and then uh, that's it. Okay, so hopefully that's right and this is right. Okay, so um, we'll test it as a uh, mobile application real quick and the first thing uh, so in here I'll go through this process a little bit so I'll debug first just in case so debug configuration right here and you go down to mobile application if you don't have a drop down you just double click on it and uh, it'll create one I created two there so I've got this citrus mobile here Everything looks good, but if I come down here to launch method, I can do air simulator or on device. I'm going to start with the simulator, okay? Uh, and then you can select the device you want to simulate. Uh, I have an incredible, so I'm just going to simulate that. And then I'll hit, um, you know, apply and debug. Okay, so here's my guy, right? Now, the keys still work. If I, if I use the keyboard, I can still jump and do this stuff, okay? But the, the mouse is as good as a touch signal. So if I press here, he's running this way. If I press over here, he's running this way. Pretty sweet. Okay, uh, I just noticed looking at this that I need to add some uh, metadata. 
my Swift metadata here. So let's go Swift and let's just set the background color. Color to, uh, I'll just do black for now. Black, two, four, five, six, like that. And then uh, frame rate. be equal to 60 so boom boom okay so I got the metadata and we'll just uh, do that again real quick okay good so again if I if I click on this half of the screen he runs if I click on this half of the screen he runs really pretty simple okay so um, now we'll try and run it in the phone now if I debug in the phone um, it is super duper slow so I really recommend just running it on the phone unless you unless you need to receive some trace events or something and you're testing stuff out you really should probably run it in uh, this so um, I'm gonna have to film this somehow I might use one of my phones to film my other phone which is amusing to me it's kinda meta anyway uh, I'll film myself playing the game with my thumbs, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here's my phone. It's awfully bright and blurry, but we'll see if we can get it going. Um, so, test on device. Let's run. So this takes a minute. Wow, can't even see. Alright, here we go. <laughs> Multiple phones going at the same time. Alright, so here we go. We've got my guy, and if I push here, he walks that way. And if I push on the other side, he walks the other way. Let me see if I can fix the... Uh, the okay, so... Um, let's try this again. If I press here, you notice I'm running that way. If I press on this side, I'm running this way. Alright, so kind of change direction. Just like that. You can imagine you know, holding it in your hand with thumb on each side. You can kind of drive that way and drive that way. So, Anyway, uh, this isn't, it's really hard to see on this camera. Uh, there's not a lot I can do to fix it though. So, um, hmm. but that's the idea. Well, so anyway, hopefully you could see, uh, even though my phone's video quality isn't the greatest, how this works and um, it, it gets you started with mobile development. So, uh, good luck and keep on coding.